The next item of business is a statement by Claire Hawkey on mental health, quality and safety of services. The Minister will take questions at the end of her statement, so there should be no interventions or interruptions. And I call on Claire Hawkey for 10 minutes, please, Minister. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. The independent inquiry into mental health services in Tayside, commissioned by NHS Tayside, was announced by the Cabinet Secretary for Health and Sport in June 2018, following a debate in the Scottish Parliament. The interim report of this inquiry, released this morning, sets out what David Strang, the independent chair of the inquiry, has heard from a range of partners so far. This interim report signals an important milestone in the work of the inquiry. The final report will provide further analysis and recommendations. The inquiry is being guided by the five principles agreed in the Scottish Parliament debate, which are to be open and transparent, be truly independent, include and involve staff from NHS Tayside, its partners and third sector providers, include and involve patients, families and carers, include a public call for evidence to ensure everyone's voice is heard. In David Strang's own words, it is important to recognise that this report identifies only the issues which have been raised in the evidence submitted to the inquiry. Investigation and detailed analysis will be required before any conclusions can be drawn or recommendations made to the inquiry. A wide range of individuals and groups have contributed to the work of the inquiry so far. Following the announcement of the inquiry, a group was established to represent patients, families, carers and third sector organisations, which would enable stakeholders to engage with the inquiry and to ensure a high level of transparency in its work. This group, known as the Stakeholder Participation Group, is coordinated and chaired by the Health and Social Care Alliance Scotland. In addition, an employee participation group, also known as EPG, was also established, chaired by a representative from Unison. The EPG consists of representatives from all NHS recognised trade unions, professional bodies and employee relations representatives. Over 200 submissions of written evidence were received by post, email and in person between September and November 2018. The Alliance held focus groups across the NHS Tayside area to capture the voices of those with lived experience of mental health services in Tayside. This was a significant piece of community research, which produced a range of valuable recommendations. The EPG conducted an online staff survey during November and December 2018, and held focus group meetings for all those employed to work in NHS Tayside Mental Health Services. 53% of all staff surveyed responded to the survey, a total of 524 individual returns. The EPG submitted their report as evidence to the inquiry in April 2019. Over 70 oral evidence sessions were held with families, patients, carers, NHS employees, other health professionals and third sector organisations in Angus, Dundee and Perth and Kinross. Evidence was also submitted oral and written from the other organisations such as Police Scotland, University Student Welfare Teams, Dundee Fairness Commission, Dundee Drug Commission and third sector organisations. Additional meetings were also held with a range of healthcare professionals and clinicians such as consultant psychiatrists, psychologists, GPs, allied health professionals, staff at the Carsview Centre, student nurses and trainee GPs. The team also met with the integrated joint board representatives and key personnel from local authorities. And this enabled the inquiry to gather views on mental health provision in Tayside. I would like to record my thanks to David Strang and his team for the work they have done and also to the range of individuals and organisations that have taken the time to contribute to David's considerations. I would also like to thank the staff and the families who I had the privilege to meet in January when I visited the inquiry for giving me their insights. The interim report outlines six key themes where improvement is required. Patient access to mental health services, patient sense of safety, quality of care, organisational learning, leadership and governance. 
The narrative presented in this report raises significant concern. David Strang has not sought to provide recommendations at this stage, but I must make it clear to the Chamber that the Scottish Government will not wait to receive recommendations before we act. For that reason, yesterday, along with the Chief Executive of the NHS in Scotland, I met with the Chief Executive and Chair of NHS Tayside and their senior team, as well as representatives of the Integrat Integration Joint Boards of Perth and Kinross, Dundee and Angus. During that meeting, I set out my clear expectations of them, specifically that the pace of change needs to be faster and that the quality and safety of their services needs to improve further. They are in agreement with these expectations and have welcomed the interim findings of the inquiry. To support them in their efforts to accelerate the pace of change and improvement, the Scottish Government will augment their local team to ensure that they can deliver on these expectations. My officials will be meeting with the senior leadership team to assess the additional resources required in the coming days. This is likely to include additional clinical input, programme management support and community and staff engagement resources. This has been welcomed and has met the strong commitment to delivery from the leadership locally. David Strang makes one specific point in his interim report which refers to halting service redesign until a comprehensive review of the mental health strategy has been undertaken. And I have sought specific assurance about the risks associated with this work. To better assess this point, I have asked the local leadership team to urgently review the risks and impact of the redesign programme. Placing this fully in the context of the transformation programme. I am clear that any redesign of services must consider the needs of all service users and the Scottish Government is keen to ensure that the voices of people with lived experience are at the forefront. Presiding Officer, I am also committed to take the learning from this inquiry and ensure it informs our national approach. The interim report raises significant issues about quality and safety. And for that reason, I will give further consideration to our national approach to the quality and safety of mental health services. We need to bring coherence to our arrangements for quality planning, quality improvement and quality assurance for mental health. Arrangements are varied and I am keen to ensure that the issues raised in Tayside are not present elsewhere. I will therefore create and chair a quality and safety board for mental health. This board will consider the arrangements for quality planning, improvement and assurance and be informed by the work of the independent inquiry. And this will include issues such as focusing on coherent multi-agency planning to ensure that quality and safety is at the heart of our approach to mental health services. Creating the right conditions to develop and spread excellence. We know many areas already have high quality services in place and we want to see those approaches replicated across the country so that people can access high quality services when they need them, wherever they are. And examination of our quality assurance arrangements. We will bring together all agencies currently involved in providing assurance on mental health services. And this will ensure that we have clarity and certainty that the correct arrangements are in place to assess the quality and effectiveness of services. Issues of safety and patient care will be included. For example, the use of restraint, administration of medicines, use of risk assessments and wider ranging issues as agreed by the group. We know that work is already underway on many issues of safety. For example, the Scottish Patient Safety Programme for Mental Health has led to reductions in self-harm, seclusion, violence and aggression and restraint across a number of areas. Collaboration and innovation from staff, service users and carers and the use of quality improvement and improvement science has been essential in achieving these improvements over the last six years. We will build on this work and ensure it is given greater national profile and prominence. The Scottish Government has a rights-based approach to mental health services and I will ensure that this ethos is embedded in the new group. I am clear that alternatives to physical restraint should always be considered first. 
These may include nursing interventions, medical, psychological or other treatments and or modifications of observation policies, care regimes, the person's activities or even buildings. Appropriate and personalised risk assessments play an important part in identifying alternatives suitable for each individual. And this should be a dynamic and ongoing process by clinicians in collaboration with the patient. Only after assessment and with fully trained and qualified staff should restraint be used and as a last resort. I recently wrote to seek reassurance from all health boards that they have the appropriate policies and training in place for all staff who may be involved in any sort of restrictive practice. I have a specific questions about reporting and recording and the clinical review of incidences of restrictive practice. And I've also made it clear that training records of all staff involved in these interventions must be maintained and training kept up to date. I will provide further information on the membership of the group and the terms of reference in due course. I am absolutely clear that the safety of our patients and the quality of the services they receive is paramount. Presiding officer, in conclusion, I welcome this interim report from the independent inquiry in Tayside and restate the commitment of this government to improving the quality and safety of mental health services for the people of Scotland. It is absolutely vital people feel safe when they are engaging with their mental health services, whether they are using them or delivering them. We must ensure that there is a high level of confidence in our mental health services and that people know they will be able to receive the right help when they need it. That's why I have given this interim report the serious consideration it deserves and stand fully behind the work of the independent inquiry alongside the people who are delivering these crucial services. Importantly, when the inquiry has concluded its work, I will ensure that the lessons learned and its recommendations will be shared widely across Scotland. Before I move on, can I gently remind members that the timings that are given in the business bulletin are indicative only and that business all runs on. Uh, so thank you to those who have sent me notes of apology for being late. And we'll now move on to the questions uh, on the issues raised in the Minister's statement. I'll allow, allow around 20 minutes for that, and then we'll move on. Uh, could those who wish to ask questions please press the request to speak buttons? And first of all, please, Annie Wells. Thank you, Deputy President Officer, and thank you to the Minister for early sight of her statement. I also wish to put on record my thanks to David Strang and his team for their work, as well as everyone who's informed inquiry or gave evidence. The whole basis of the report is to examine end-to-end -end mental health services, which means addressing from first point of contact with the health service to the best possible outcome for the patient. In the interim report, serious concerns were raised by GPs regarding the referral process, and there was also concerns around ambiguous CAM thresholds, just as examples. This to me highlights that we need a whole system approach to design and delivery of services. Will, will all future actions take this into consideration? And the Minister has assured us that the Scottish Government will not wait to take action. Can I ask the Minister when she will report back on the meeting with the senior leadership team in the coming days? And when will she, when will she report in progress? The Minister has described the interim report as a milestone moment, but the milestone moment will, come, will not come until patients in Tayside see better mental health services. Thank you. Claire Hockey. Uh, I thank Annie Wells uh, for those questions. And to, uh, if I can try and take them in order, and my apologies if I, if I miss anything here because there was quite a, quite a lot of questions there. The long waits for support and treatment are unacceptable and, and this government is investing £54 million to help boards improve their performance against waiting times. Um, and we, the government expects those who need help to get help at the time that they need it. NHS uh, Tayside Board have stated that their policy is for patients to be advised of the likely waiting time if they have to wait to be seen and um, the Scottish Government has also committed to providing additional funding for 800 additional mental health workers in key settings which includes GP practices. With regards to the meeting with senior leadership, I think, I, I, I'm, my apologies if I wasn't clear in my statement, I thought I had covered that, that my meeting with the senior leadership of Tayside Health Board and the integrated joint boards was to set out 
my plans for a response to the interim report and my expectations of how they were going to um, accept that report and, and respond to that. In terms of, um, the, you, you raised CAMS as well and the, camp, the, the difference in the uh, CAMS thresholds at um, in NHS Tayside. They assure me that they have uh, plans to change the age threshold for children to 18 uh, to come in line with most of the other health boards across the country. Monica Lynn. Thank you. I thank the Minister for advance sight of her statement. Scottish Labour welcomes the interim report. We called for this inquiry and our thoughts are with the patients and families affected. And I pay tribute to everyone who has taken part in the inquiry. I am surprised that there are no immediate recommendations. Can the Minister provide a further update on the timeline for when she expects recommendations to be brought forward by David Strang? And as risk to patient safety is an urgent concern right now, does she agree that NHS Tayside should be escalated back to the highest level and placed under special measures? And can she confirm if the Quality and Safety Board for Mental Health, which she announced moments ago, will report to Parliament? And will it be carrying out a national review of mental health services, which is what Scottish Labour and campaigners have been calling for? Claire Hawkey. I thank Monica Lennon um, for her questions. The safety of those using and delivering our mental health services is absolutely paramount. And NHS Tayside have outlined to me the work that they're undertaking within their quality improvement programme on a range of activities aimed at improving the care and the safety of patients, which I think we agree is, is extremely important. And central to this is the ongoing feedback from staff, patients and carers. Uh, there is current improvement activity in NHS Tayside, and that's focusing on improving observation uh, observation practice, which is a, a national healthcare improvement Scotland priority. Um, with regards to uh, Mr Strang's inquiry, it is an independent inquiry. Um, I have no influence over when that inquiry will report and what its recommendations should, uh, will be, and nor should I. Um, and Mr Strang, will, I'm sure, will, uh, will provide us with details of when he will come forward with his final recommendations to us. This is an interim report. I echo Monica Lennon's um, thanks to those who have been involved in the inquiry. I met personally with family and uh, service users. I met with staff involved in that inquiry and um, their words have stayed with me and I think it's really important that we thank them for their contribution um, to the, uh, the uh, evidence that we've had today from Mr Strang's report. Move to the open questions. I have Ruth Maguire followed by Miles Briggs. Presiding officer, can I ask the minister how health services can work together more closely to ensure that the support given to those who need it is coherent and effective? Claire Hawkey. Um, there's a need for transformation to a whole system approach to mental health by all public services, including GPs and other primary care workers. And this needs to be done in partnership with people who use the services and their families, with the mental health workforce and with delivery partners across the public and third sectors. Multidisciplinary and multi-agency working is key to this transformation and will ensure that the delivery of a whole health model of care for individuals accessing services. As I announced today, the new Quality and Safety Board for Mental Health, which I will chair, will look at creating the right conditions to develop and spread excellence across Scotland. Miles Briggs, followed by Gil Patterson. Thank you, Deputy President Officer. The interim report states that patients report telling staff they were suicidal, but the risk was not taken seriously until they made a serious attempt to take their own life. Minister, I do not believe that this is just a situation specific to NHS Tayside. Can I therefore ask what investigation will take place into the service redesign in other health boards across the country, which is ongoing? And if the Scottish Government is truly going to regain the confidence of families with the establishment of the Quality and Safety Board for mental health, why is this not going to be independently chaired? Claire Hawkey. Uh, I, th I thank Mr Briggs for his question. I'm quite... Um, 
disturbed by, by the assertion that he's making um, at the start of his question there about uh, patients reporting uh, feeling suicidal and thinking this is widespread, that the mental health professionals or healthcare professionals are ignoring people when they're in distress, because that's certainly not my experience of working in the NHS for many years. Every interaction that a mental health professional and indeed GPs and other, other healthcare professionals have with people who are presenting in distress or with mental health problems involves risk assessment. Every single interaction, it doesn't have to be a formal risk screen assessment. I, I, I accept what Mr Strang has put in his report. I am not refuting what he has put there, but I refute the assertion that Mr, uh, Mr Briggs is making about mental health services across the country. Gil Patterson to be followed by Jenny Mara. Thanks very much, Presiding Officer. Uh, can I ask the Minister how the Scottish Government is working across wider public services to improve access to mental health <coughs> services and to reduce mental health inequalities? Claire Hockey. Um, I thank Mr Patterson for his question. Mm -hmm. Where people uh, do not feel welcome or do not see themselves represented, it can be hard for them to open up about mental health problems or to believe that they'll be listened to. Differences in ethnicity, sexuality or gender identity, for example, should not be barriers to receiving high quality services to treat mental health problems. Our aim is that mental health services and professionals are welcoming to all and respond to the mental health needs of individuals in a person-centred, safe, effective and respectful way. Up to 2019-2020, we're investing £54 million to help boards improve access to mental health services. Our programme for government also sets out a £250 million package of measures to support positive mental health and prevent ill health. And this funding aims to ensure that high quality mental health services are accessible to everyone. Jenny Mara, followed by Mark Ruskell. President Officer, my thoughts are with every family affected by the issues raised in this report. Minister, you said that safety is paramount. There are huge patient safety issues in this report, but there are no actions in your statement today that will guarantee patient safety over the next weeks and months before the final report is published. So I would reiterate Monica Lennon's call for you to re-escalate NHS Tayside to level five so that the board gets the supervision and support it needs to guarantee patient safety. Also, David Strang was very clear that the change on service redesign should be halted before there is a comprehensive review. Will she instruct NHS Tayside to halt these changes before the final report is published? Claire Hockey. I thank Jenny Mara for her question and I'm aware of her interest in this over the, my, certainly my time in, in, in this parliament that she's raised issues. Um, I addressed the issue of Mr Strang's recommendation within my report. What I have asked is that, I, um, that the board come back and report to me on the risks of progressing service redesign and the risks of not progressing service redesign and come back to me with that report shortly. Um, you, you asked me the question, so I'm, I'm trying to answer what, what you have asked me. Um, NHS Tayside uh, have been responding to the recommendations that came out of the HIST report, and they have also been responding to some of the recommendations that came out of the inquiry following the BBC um, uh, programme, and using that as a way of helping them to improve the quality of their care. Some improvements have been made, but as I said, the pace of change is not what I expect, and that's why we will be looking at providing additional outside support in terms of programme management, in terms of clinical support, to ensure that those changes are made in a, a speedy fashion. Mark Ruskell, followed by Alex Cole Hamilton. The inquiry report revealed that GP referrals to mental health services are frequently rejected on the basis that the patient in question did not meet the required criteria, despite GPs not being informed what these criteria actually are. So what steps will the Minister take to ensure that there are clear referral guidelines and that these are urgently communicated to GPs? Claire Hockey. 
Um, well, I, I think, uh, thank Mr Ruskell for his question. Um, if he is aware of the response that NHS Tayside has made to today's report, he will be aware that they have accepted uh, what uh, Mr Strang has said. And I, my expectation would be <coughs> that they would be ensuring that uh, referral criteria to services is made clear to referrers. Alex Cole-Hamilton, followed Deputy. by David Torrance. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Jilly Murray, who is the niece of David Ramsey, who very sadly took his life after being failed by Cars View, tweeted this morning to say, I have been and I'm going through hell and none of this benefits me or my family. David is still dead. So can I ask the Minister what support will be given to families uh, who are sadly left behind because patients have taken their lives in, in Tayside? And secondly, given the concerns about the use of restraint and disbelief among staff about crisis situations, what comfort can she extend to patients today in crisis in Tayside that they will be taken seriously. Claire Hockey. Uh, I, my sympathies and, and my thoughts go to any family who has been bereaved through suicide um, in Tayside in particular today because I'm sure this report will stir up a lot of emotion. Um, not that they don't feel that pain every day, but it'd be a particular, I would imagine a particularly difficult day for them, but also to families across the country. Um, with regards to um, rest restraint, I think Mr, Mr. Uh, Cole Hamilton asked me there about restraint. As I, as I said, I, uh, the Scottish Government is absolutely clear that alternatives to physical restraint should be considered first, that the use of physical restraint uh, should only be a last resort and for the shortest period of time to ensure safety. I have written to all health boards seeking assurance that they have policies in place covering all forms of restricted practice and that staff should receive the and that staff receive that appropriate restraint. Um, and I covered that with, within my statement. Um, you also asked me about um, support for bereaved relatives. There, there are obviously um, services currently available in Dundee for bereaved relatives, counselling service and, and bereavement support services. But part of the suicide prevention leadership group's um, work is looking at support that can be given to all families when they're bereaved by, or all who are touched by, um, by bereavement by, from suicide. I think it's a really important area to look at. Could you remember always to address your microphone, Minister, you were fading away. David Torrance, followed by Brian Whittle. Thank you, President Officer. Can I ask the Minister what action the Scottish Government has taken to improve access to primary care service for people who suffer from both mental and physical ill health? Claire Hockey. Thank you. It's, it's important to consider that all health is interconnected and there are clear links between an individual's physical and their mental health and the quality of their life and therefore the overall quality of their health outcomes. As part of the mental health strategy, the Scottish Government has committed to provide funding to support the employment of 800 additional mental health workers to improve access in key settings, and this includes GP practices. And we are investing significantly to develop this, and funding will rise to £35 million in 2021, uh, 22 and beyond. Ryan Whittle, followed by Tom Arthur. Hey, thank you, Deputy Presenting Officer. I think in delivering uh, patient safety, I think the Minister would agree with me that it's really important that we look after the needs of our health care professionals uh, so in, 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 and ensure that they have the support in place uh, within what is a very stressful environment. So can I ask the Minister, as part of uh, the, the, the final report, will consideration be given to the health uh, of our health care professionals? Claire Hockey. Um, the, the report by David Strang is an independent report, so I can't predict or influence what, what would be in, in that report. One of the things that, that the inquiry team has done is ensured that there is a separate work stream for staff, which was led by um, a, a, an official from Unison, and there were representatives from all of the major trade unions and professional bodies there so that staff employed by NHS Tayside working in mental health services could have their voice heard and um, could do that in, in, a, in a way that they felt safe and supported and that they also um, felt that they were, they were able to, to be open about, about their concerns and would feel supported within that. Um, and I think that is, that is really important. It's crucial not only to, um, to NHS Tayside as an employer ensure that their staff 
are safe and supported in their work through their um, duty of care as employers, but also that staff side organisations and trade union bodies, professional organisations, also have a pastoral role there to ensure that staff are supported and feel safe at work. And if they don't, they are able to raise that in a way that they feel reassured. Tom Arthur, followed by David Stewart. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can the Minister set out what action the Scottish Government is taking to reduce the stigma of mental ill health and suicide to ensure that people who are at risk of suicide feel able to ask for help? Claire Hockey. Um, I thank Tom Arthur for raising this extremely important question. We want a Scotland where people can get the right help at the right time, expect recovery and fully enjoy the rights free from discrimination and stigma. Action 3 of the Suicide Prevention Action Plan commits the Scottish Government to work with the National Suicide Prevention Leadership Group and partners to encourage a coordinated approach to public awareness campaigns which maximises impact. The Scottish Government provides funding to See Me, which is Scotland's national programme to end mental health stigma and discrimination and has quickly established a reputation as internationally groundbreaking in its scope, ambition and delivery. It has put the issue of mental health stigma firmly within the public arena and is working to challenge stigma and discrimination at its roots where people experience it at work through health and social care, in education at home or in our communities. David Stewart, followed by Fulton McGregor. <clears throat> uh, thank you, President Officer. The Minister referred to patient restraint in her statement and in reply to her, an earlier question. Can the Minister outline the training that staff receive on restraint? How confident is the Minister that only fully trained and qualified staff exercise restraint? And finally, is a record kept of each and every time an individual is restrained? Claire Hawkey. Um, I used to train physical restraint myself, Mr Stewart, so I could give you a demonstration if you like. Uh, <laughs> okay, enough. Uh, yes, the, there are accredited training courses uh, provided by accredited trainers. Um, in, when I had my meeting yesterday with NHS Teesside, I was informed at that point in time 95% of their staff, their training records were up to date. And it is it, vitally important that staff are appropriately trained so that it is safe for the patient who is being restrained and it is safe for the staff who are carrying out that restraint. Restraint, as I said, should only be used as a, as a last resort and after uh, other uh, considerations have been made in terms of trying to manage a very difficult situation. Um, and with regards to uh, training records, as I said in, in my statement, I've written out to all the health boards to uh, set out my expectations of training records and to ensure that uh, they are keeping records as they should. We have a DATIC system within the NHS and all physical restraint should be recorded within that as well. As, and that, that, that system, is, those DATIC records are then approved by management. Um, and if there are any incidences of uh, injury, then that would be reported to also to management and there would be an incident review. Any incidents of serious injury would be reported to the Mental Welfare Commission. But in addition to that, any incidents of restraint would be recorded in a patient's clinical notes. Last question is with Fulton McGregor. Can I ask the Minister what steps the Scottish Government and COSLA will take to implement the work of Dr Dame Demise Coyer and the Children and Young People's Mental Health Task Force? Claire Hockey. Um, I've recently met with uh, Councillor Stuart Curry, the COSLA Health and Social Care spokesperson, to discuss our joint approach to build on the work that Dr Coyer began. We are currently considering the best way to move forward and we will make an announcement shortly. That concludes portfolio questions. We'll move on to the next item of business. Oh, sorry, it wasn't portfolio questions at all, was it? See what happens when I don't have a script in front of me. <laughs> that concludes the questions on the minister's statement. Sorry about that. And we we'll move on to general questions if people could um, sort themselves. Seating, thank you.